G'day Lance here from Solar Electric Technology. Today I thought I'd talk about off-grid power systems and in particular how we work out how much energy you're going to be using on site and therefore what size off-grid system you're going to need. It's important that we get your, your energy consumption down as much as possible and, and the ways to do that um, are firstly to get rid of the main drawers in the house which are uh, anything which generates heat so space heating for example um, using a log burner is a good option and then you can use a heat transfer system to sort of move that warm air around the house you could use a gas fire or a pallet fire underfloor heating could be used um, but you'd need to use a boiler of some sort for that uh, like a diesel boiler um, a wood boiler or an Arga fire to get that heat in, a gas, a gas boiler. Um, then you've got water heating. Uh, using a wet back fire in, com in combination with solar water heating is one way of doing it. Or potentially a gas caliphant, uh, especially if you're in a batch where you're not there all the time, a gas caliphant is probably a really good option. Your cooking, um, probably with a gas oven, gas hob. There's some really good gas ovens about, it's just knowing where to find them and so we can suggest some websites to look at and get some really nice gas ovens. Um, some people use wood wood ovens like the old coal ranges or an Arga, all that sort of thing. There's some modern ones of those available too now. Um, so those are three main loads therefore taken out. And then you've got lighting, uh, LED lighting is a good option probably one of the better options. Uh, LED lights are efficient and they they last um, a lot longer than halogens and that sort of thing. Appliances, um, one of the biggest things is refrigeration. You can get some really nice um, European fridge freezers which are really efficient. It's just the cost can be high and so sometimes it's worth looking at what local retailers have available um, I've seen I've seen one the other day, an LG fridge freezer the other day, a standard family one, and it was 350 calorie hours it used a year, which is not so bad. Um, maybe slightly higher than a European model, but it's still fairly close and um, a fair amount cheaper. So, so you're having a look around at appliances such as your washing machine, your dishwasher, your fridge freezer, your chest freezer. Um, at local retailers and, and just trying to find the one that suits you the best not a lot bigger than your knees and as efficient as possible uh, the energy wise website is also a good place to look they have a list of appliances which are star rated and they have their efficiency uh, or their quality ratings on them as well so that's another place to look and find those efficient appliances uh, LED TVs are the way to go right now they're, they're the most efficient available um, and then the other thing is water pumping. Uh, often people will have a rain catchment tank, like a large tank where they catch the water off the house and that water is needs to be pumped back into the house and pressurised. So we would recommend using a Grunfoss pump. So speak to a Grunfoss agent and they can recommend something. Um, their pumps can be half a kilowatt as opposed to a lot of the standard pumps, uh, potentially one and a half to two kilowatts. So you can definitely save some energy there. Um, power tools, most things are battery operated these days and, and those batteries can be charged off of the off-grid system, no problem. Um, also, most power tools don't draw too much, um, especially if they're only used a little bit. If you're going to be using a lot of energy from your power tools and you know, using, using them for extended periods of time, then most off-grid systems will have a backup generator built into them and you can run that generator while you're doing that work and, and just reduce the load of the of the off-grid system. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it in a nutshell really. One of the other important things to, to factor in is the design of your house. That the more efficient the house is and the way it heats and things like that, the better and cools. So... Um, Passive solar houses these days have a lot of north facing uh, glass. They have some thermal mass in them, which means that the sun will come in 
and it'll heat that thermal mass, whether it's a, a concrete wall or a slab, and, and, and that energy will radiate out during the evening. Um, double glazing, you know, holds that warmth in as well. Um, they have louvers or large eaves as well. So when the sun's higher in the summer, it, it actually shades some of the sun, the peak sun from coming in during the day and keeps the house cooler. And in winter, the sun's lower, so it actually makes its way through that glass and it does heat the house up. Um, and then you have um, strategic windows and places to, to open up and cool down the house. Um, so yeah, those are some things to think about and talk about with your architect or your builder prior to, to starting to build, obviously. And um, that can help to keep the consumption and the energy usage down in the house. So yeah, I hope that helps. And um, yeah, my name's Lance from Solar Electric Technology. And uh, yeah, please get in touch if you're after uh, an off-grid system. We'd love to help.